is Doug DeMuro. And I am Tyler Hoover in the first person of Hoovy's Garage. <sighs> okay. Today we are going to talk about the most underrated and overrated cars. Yes. Underrated, overrated. Yes. Okay, let's do it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And you should, because we've had some great sales lately, like this Porsche Macan Turbo that brought just under $49,000, this fantastic Shelby GT500 that sold for just over $91,000, and this great Aston Aston Martin DB9 that sold for just over $45,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. With daily auctions and great selection, check it out at carsandbids.com. Okay, we are going to do underrated and overrated cars. Can I start? Okay. What do you want to start with? Underrated, I agree. Move overrated, on. very much overrated. How can you possibly say, he warned me he was gonna do this. How could you possibly call this car over, in what sense? It is way too expensive for what it is. And the driving experience, I got to drive one recently, not that good. The weird clutch thing where you're not allowed to give it any gas to I make it go. Just, I have come to the conclusion that the, I actually prefer this to a normal clutch. If you get used to it, it makes more sense. You let off. Uh -huh. And then you don't do anything, and once it's moving, then you give it gas. There's no, like, find the bite point, and it's different in every car, and it's a bunch of gas. All you do is you let off, the car moves, and then you just get in with gas and, and supplement it. It's then, perfect. then just get an automatic. Get a PDK. Well, it's a manual transmission. It's the last of the analog supercars, and it doesn't let you, like, do a clutch drop if you wanted to, or do <laughs> okay. whatever. You know, I mean, do a clutch drop if you wanted to. Nobody wants to. Of course they do. Right now. I mean, There's nobody with one of these who's like, man, I really wish I could do a clutch drop. Okay. The so it's just a $40,000 part. In this the clutch car. is weird. For the last analog supercar, but it only has at the a start. weird And when you, when you get That's when going. you use the clutch. Where did you drive this? You drove it four miles an hour for one mile, didn't you? No, we went through, it was 17 mile drive, so I oh, couldn't get on it that God hard. I mean, I took it up to like 60, 70 for a blip a few times, but yeah. You're wrong that it's too expensive, and I'll give you some thoughts about that. Okay. This car, million dot, million two, okay? A 918 right. Spider is a million seven. You cannot sit here and tell me that that is a more That's stupid. <laughs> an Enzo is three and a half. Which would you rather have, an Enzo or this. Ferrari guys are crazy. So but like I got you two get 50 GTOs, point. $50 million. That's, 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 that's also a, that's a whole country. We should put that on no, our list. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's so dumb. But this, okay, it's not but just think the clutch. About, think about the, really. Okay. If an Enzo is, th that's three times the money. Three times. You think that, like, I, ca I can't justify that. It makes no sense to me. That is an automatic, ugly, like that's not a car that is that desirable to people except people who want that gr set of supercars. I agree with you, but it's the same for this car. It's the, it's well, exactly, so it's, I mean, it's not only that, the clutch, the the weird the shifter is in a really weird spot next to the steering wheel. No, you, it's, it's you're up, out of your mind. It's up high. You're nuts. You have to hold your arms up. You, you have your arms where you should have them when you're doing performance driving, which is on the steering wheel, on the sides, to, co correctly, and then instantly, boom, shift, shift, shift. There's no like reaching down here, like in your no. beloved Gullwing. It's like, all right, hang on, I'm gonna shift. Let me take my hand off this millimeter thick wire steering wheel. All right, down here somewhere's the gear lever. Ah, oh, there it is. Ah. That's what a 300, this car, boom, shift, boom, boom, boom. Which is not what you do. It's what I do. No, I mean, you're, you're cruising and, and relaxing. Okay, that's that's a decent point. Um, but also, the, the engine... Formula One! Yeah, what? The, it, the engine it, it was does... developed for Formula One. At idle, it sounds like it's broken. Yeah, it, that's one of the most interesting things about this car. I, I feel so too bad. I take it to Cars and Coffee, and oh, I'm leaving, all these kids come and gather around. <laughs> a box of rocks noise. I don't meds know what in exhaust there. yours ha Mine doesn't sound like that, but okay. it's quiet. It's very quiet. Mm -hmm. And so I turn it on, they're expecting to hear the V10 howl, and it's like, yeah. mm. it's like nothing. Right. It only sounds amazing when you really get up there. But when you get up there, it's, in my opinion, the best sounding car in the history of the car. Mm. 
the history of the car. I mean, the LFA sounds better. F okay, fine. Oh, this number two best sounding car. I don't care. <laughs> it's not like it's 84th. There's some Ferraris that sound like better. Like what? Yeah, I mean, like the 355 screams better than They this. don't work. They're, just, they're never running. You, no one would know. They're 50 possible. grand. They're 100 grand when they're, not, you know, really nice. Yeah. yeah. 100 grand to enter, and then it's like eight grand every okay. couple weeks. Well, <laughs> okay. You know, if somebody could have stretched a little bit harder and got themselves a real analog supercar that doesn't require... You're talking about an 110. I thought about it, but no. it just wasn't going to happen. I mean, an F40 would have been <laughs> one. A, or a if you're going to... a little farther. The F40 is double the price. Well, not... It didn't use to. I guess very recently it is. But, okay. The, these, these... I wasn't looking six years ago. <laughs> well, no, just six months ago. But you this could have stretched car... a little bit more and got an F40. Or if you wanted to what get the ultimate... a little bit? If you wanted to, like, get the <laughs> ultimate mid-2000 supercar, it's not this. It's, it's a, Vi a Veyron. <laughs> and you're giving this car crap and because of the clutch and the shifter, and then you mentioned a Veyron, which is a P R N D L. Dude, right. I thought about a Veyron. I actually legitimately could talked about it with some friends. They're impossible to own. They're impossible to own. These are pretty bad too. I mean, you're, you're it enjoying is, it right now with a bunch of issues. It's I about to go back and spend. I legitimately looked into it. Yeah. Like serious hardcore. Spoke to people who have these cars. Mm -hmm. Veyron is on a different level of insane. This car has some temperamental stuff. Um, and it can get kind of expensive. However, the owner who had it, two owners before me, owned it for nine years in San Diego. He only ever did oil changes and it was 1200 bucks an oil change. And every year he would do an oil change at the Porsche dealer and that was that. Now, when he sold it, it had $58,000 in deferred maintenance. <laughs> but that's a long period of time. Veyrons are a different world. You know, every Veyron is now on aftermarket wheels because you have to replace the wheels when you replace the tires every few tire changes. Right. And so like, it's Veyrons are on a different level of yeah. insane. And that's why they're cheap. That is one of the pinnacle supercars of our lives. Veyron. And they've depreciated to half their original value, even though they have this mystique around them well, because they're trash to own. It, it's pretty. I'm glad you got it. I hope you didn't 911R yourself buying it at the hotness of the market. I probably did, but I don't care. Okay. It's, it's like when I bought my house, everybody's like, oh, you, you're buying at the peak of the market. Don't do this. It's 2019. It worked out. Okay. Maybe, All right. maybe this will go down. I actually would kind of prefer if it did because I think it would be more usable then. It's such a valuable car. So you'd prefer to lose a million dollars and then you'd be happy. I can drive it some more. Great. I would be able to drive okay. it more. That would be great. Okay, we're going to move on because right. you're obviously insane. I'm going to tell you what the most overrated okay. car is. The single most overrated car in the entire history of the automotive industry is the Lexus LFA. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> ridiculous. Those, are, that, those cost what this does. Mm -hmm. And regardless of your thoughts, it's an automatic Lexus. It's not attractive. No. The performance is not good. The LC500 is better <laughs> performing, better. looks better. Um, yeah, the more comfortable on the inside. Totally. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. LFA, I really think that's one of these situations. There's a few cars, and, and this is true of a lot of luxury goods, where like something will get really expensive because some really rich guys who are not really all that sophisticated kind of ratchet it up because right. they just want one because their buddy's got one of their yes. worries they're going to miss out. And I swear that's what's going on with the LFA market. It's like... Mm -hmm. How is that a million bucks? It's not good to drive. It's not good to look at. When Lexus tried to sell them new, they had to hire a dude. It was two years. The one They bought one at the Wichita, Kansas Lexus dealer. It's there for two years. Two years. Didn't it just sell. sat. It just sat. Yeah. For they 400 were, They were grand terrified. I, yeah. bet they, I bet they got rid of it at 50. Oh, off it, was, it was a lot. Yeah, off. Yeah, I remember. I just, I liked the LFA. I liked it at 350. Mm -hmm. I liked it at 450. At a million, it's like, if I wanted a car with a bad trans for a million bucks... Yeah, I'd buy an ED110 with a blown transmission. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. There's a lot of cars in that same genre that, a lot. that have not appreciated to over their MSRP. How is it more music. than a Countach? It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Well, yeah. It doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't make any sense. It's a cool no. car. Yeah. But it's not that cool. Yeah. But your point about uh, you know rich people just hyping things up, I think, do very much apply to the Land Rover Defender of any era and the Mercedes G Wagon. Really, these of, are more cars of that I own. Era. These are more cars that I own. I think, I, I think that's. I mean, those are two things. Like, I would be offended by this, except I also have Land Rover Defender on my list of overrated. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> like it's such trash. Oh yes. <laughs> but I get people come up to me when I drive mine all the time, being like, "Whoa, this is a Jeep, but it's a Land Rover. How do I get one of these?" And I want to be like, "You don't." <laughs> no. <laughs> because if you're not an enthusiast, you shouldn't own that car. Right. It's. it's leaking all the time and it's like a tough vehicle to drive and oh, I just drove one yesterday that uh, it's an outfit out of Florida 
and it's it's got ed in the name i remember that but there's in the middle and they spent you spend three hundred thousand dollars either ev swapping or ls swapping and you get a 110 that everything's gone through. It was the best driving 110 but, ever, but it was $300,000. And, and the thing I've learned about all those companies, because there's a million outfitters now for Defenders, it's still a Defender. You can only do so much to it to make it good. It's still rough, loud, yes. awful in yes. basically every way. Like right. it's still a Defender. And people think they can buy them and put in all this dynamat and leather and diamond stitch seats and nice wheels and then it's like nice. It will never drive like your Range Rover. And I think that's what people, when they come up to me, they want. Right. They're like, wow, here's an opportunity to own a Jeep, but it's a Land Rover, so it's going to be nicer. But what they don't know is it's actually worse. It's Absolutely. measurably worse. I mean, you're one of the few people that actually uses it, obviously, doing the beach driving in Nantucket. And also, you know, you drive around when you have it here, obviously, you're just driving around the city, car spotting and all that stuff. But... Did you drive across country once? No, I will you never. never. Like you would ne no, no. I mean, it'd never. Be, it'd be it has been suicidal. discussed. I will never do it. No, no. I think that car. I think the thing about the Defender is it's super cool, but like it's it should be just super cool to like people who want to maintain an old truck. Right. And when it got when it got into this whole rich person thing, mm -hmm. that kind of it didn't ruin it. It just like it, it got crazy expensive for something that never should have was never intended to be like a nice expensive car. Right. And what a ridiculous vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. And the G-Wagon certainly is much more usable in any form, but it's also, I think, pretty overrated and inflated. So like the first year, like a 2002 G 500 with 150,000 miles was still a $30,000 car. The thing about and then Gs, it just, it just... I, I don't, I agree slash disagree. New Gs, I think are super overrated. Oh, they're you got yes. rich people now paying Silly. 100 over. Silly. Or Even now when the market is slowed, they're like down to 25 over. Right. And Mercedes has raised the MSRP as well yeah. to get a little more. So it's, it's still like... 50 plus over from a few years ago. Right, yeah. that's right. And that those are certainly overrated. The thing that's cool about the older ones is they're pretty reliable. People don't, younger people don't associate Mercedes-Benz with reliability, but like the M113 V8 era, which those early Gs had, my G has, the car just never, it just always runs. But there's other things. I mean, you look at the window regulator the wrong way and it just falls down. And that was a problem on the early US cars, yeah. yeah. An M113 with a triple locker, mm -hmm. that car's never gonna be cheap because any, just like Land Cruisers, yeah. any good off-roader that becomes old, there will always be a floor because off-roaders will buy them. Degenerate off-roaders. <laughs> I suppose. Will just pick them up and lift them and stuff. And that's why XJ Cherokees are still expensive. And that's why even like YJs are still relatively expensive for nice ones. They can be. Because you can still go and do stuff with them. And Gs are really capable. They are. But they also... Rust apart the paint bond. Rust is the problem. I mean, it's, it's just, the there's just so much to deal with. I, you say it's reliable, but there's there's so many ancillary like, items. That was a hard word to say. That uh, just mess up. I don't entirely disagree, but but I've never had any issues with mine. It's it's it, and and, and Wait, you get a flatbed to it. One I time did it broke down. At one. Hey, when the ignition, if, the listen, electronic ignition from the weird little laser key broke, right? If we were listing cars that were unreliable based on the time, the number of times I had to flatbed them, none of my cars would be <laughs> considered <laughs> reliable. Neither would any of yours. <laughs> mm, yeah, okay. I did flatbed it. it once. The, it has an ignition issue. It's not the laser key, but the ignitions mm -hmm. failed. Mine failed um, in a bad spot. But other than that, um, it's been dead reliable, and I, I daily it. And it, I, I hear from other guys who have mid-90s, late-90s, early 2000s ones, the same thing. They're pretty reliable. When they brought them to the States, they added a bunch of leather, luxury, all these screens. Everything got a little, started to get a little out there. And then they changed powertrans and went to turbos. And then, yeah, I don't screw with that stuff. At its core, it was a cheap An military vehicle. Yeah. And people are worshipping it like it's... I do think it's crazy else. what the convertibles are selling for. Of course, yeah. That's, that was the primary word. Yeah, I guess. And it's you owning it, so I had to say something. <laughs> Proof that Sorry. you actually think the Crow GT is underrated. Um, okay, let's overrated. move on to underrated cars. Underrated. What do you got? What's your number one? Okay. Here, this oh. is, I think this is it. Oh, well, of course, all the cars that I currently own. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we talk about the... That is what you've done here. What? God, this is classic Hoovy. What? The, if he the, has chosen, or overrated all the cars that I have, and if, underrated all the cars that he has, and probably will sell within the next 12 months. If the Boy, LFA, I don't know why these cars aren't selling for more. Pumping, no. Uh, if the LFA is worth million plus, million and a half, two million dollars, what's up with the SLR McLaren? <sighs> I hate to agree with you because I, I think this is embarrassing what you've done today. 
Um, but yeah, why aren't SLRs more? Uh, obviously, there's only like 200 LFAs in there's, the US. I think so there's 400 LFAs. Oh, there's a lot more SLRs. In the US, right? but yeah. How yeah, many a lot SLR? more. In the thousands, I think, yeah. But what a cool car. 2000, yeah. When I see an SLR, mm -hmm. I like, even if it's at an event, I like lose it. It's so biz alien looking. Right. It was a cool car. Compared to all of its contemporaries and what it was being compared to back in the day. Yeah, I get that it's you know, the slush box and it doesn't drive the same and the weird brakes and, and all that. But it was in the same league as as this stuff. What we dreamed yeah. about as kids. And it's the Those only Those were the one, three. When, when we were kids, it was the Croja TD Enzo and the SLR. It's the only one that's not, you know, getting to Malibu Beach House money. You know? I agree. So, yeah. I agree. I'm surprised that they haven't gone higher. I agree with that. SLS you have on here too. I'm... I don't know, they made a ton of SLSs. They did, but it's really special, too. It's, Is it? It's AMG's first ground-up design. It'll be the only car that they do a going with that's not going to be electric or hybrid. But isn't it just a goal? Like, it's like a tribute. I love them. I love how they drive. But they're they're not cheap. What is it? What is it? One hundred fifty for a Roadster, two hundred for a Coupe. Ish. Yeah. I that mean, that doesn't seem cheap to you. I mean, that's for, there's a it's a big production run. And then they made better versions. That that whenever you do that, it like screws the original car. You know, because then everybody, everybody who's a real collector wants the Black Series. I agree with you a little bit on that. But I mean, the SLR was really my focus on that. I put the SLS on there because I own it as I well. I agree with you about the yeah. SLR. I think yeah. SLR should be more valuable. I'm not going to go out and buy one. Brakes are insanely expensive. How much are brakes? Uh, I don't want to, no. Isn't it like, like, like 15 grand a corner or it something? It can't be. But how much are these a corner? 10. Oh, so they're a little cheaper. Huh? But there's a solution. Oh, yeah. They can the one, one interesting difference for this car, there's people out there who are really focused on trying to find more cost-effective things. I bet that's not happening with SLR all that much. Right. Uh, McLaren MSL, they'll let you send it back to like, yeah, pimp I've it seen, out. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be fun to see those end products. But Underrated on my end, 996 GT2. Here we are again. Nobody yeah. talks about this car. Yeah. There's 180 of them in the U.S. They're amazing. They're so good. Yeah. They drive so well. I haven't driven one, but I just, the, the idea of it is. And nobody wants a 996, but this car is incredibly rare. Do you know that 991 GT2s or 997 GT2s are like 800 grand? Some They're crazy. ridiculous. 996 yeah. GT2s are like 160. Mm -hmm. How? Runny eggs. Yeah. It's insane. I know. So like, I know. People, I know. <laughs> because, because these people don't actually drive these cars. Mm -hmm. They buy the cars. To, to, to collect and, 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 and invest in. So they don't care that the 9662 is an amazing driver car. To them, they're worried that it's never gonna really shoot up in value, so it's not a car they can buy. Yeah. F that! Right, right. I mean, obviously the PDK is a crazy thing for a track car, and then the, the manuals that everybody keeps thinking, well, this is the last manual. But the GT2 is obviously the, uh, the Nürburgring record holder and all that, a lot yeah. of press with that. Uh, but yeah, something about that car. The Obviously, so, it was also like subtle. Yeah. It oh, wasn't yeah. like the whole winged right and graphics and colors. It was just and, like yeah. we're gonna do a turbo mm -hmm. with a little different front end and a yeah. little different wing and no rear wiper. Right. And it's gonna it's most gonna, of them will be silver. You know, most of them will be silver. You know? Right. You don't know. Uh huh. And it's gonna kick you in the face. Right. I love that car. God, I want one. Oh yeah, BMW Z8. That's a good yeah, one. that's on my list. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's legitimately a good one. Yeah. Those the market on Z8s is so weird. Mm -hmm. It was like 150 new, right? Yep. And then it kind of went down. Way down. And then it went up. Right. And then it went down. <laughs> but now they're about 150. Right. <laughs> so 20 years later. Unless it's a color. Color that's, ones that's or the, more. That's the, like, no, it can be double yeah. for a funky color one. If it's a silver one like mine. Yeah, but they, most of them were silver, red, black. Those don't bring much more money, right? It depends, yeah. But the crazy part about it is the Alpinas bring so much more than the regular Z8s. I know. And it's the, it's <laughs> it's the worst. worst engine, a horrible slush box <laughs> automatic. No sense. The wheels no look sense. good, which I, I put the Alpina wheels on my car and it's, it's perfect now. That's one of the most bizarre things that has ever happened. And it's, it's further proof of kind of what I was saying earlier. That sometimes these unsophisticated rich people, they, they hear that it's a low production Alpina. Mm -hmm. And they're like, that's the one to have. But like for people who are like, know what they're talking about, it's right. not the one to have. <laughs> the Z8 was a pretty awesome car, to be yeah. honest. I think it's incredibly beautiful. Yeah. It has that great powertrain, manual yes. transmission. Yes. And then the throwback styling to the 507. And they yeah. did such a good job. Of all the retro throwbacks, that's... Up there, I would say in the Ford GT being pretty, the absolute, like, like, like a tasteful tribute yeah. to a vintage BMW. Yeah. But 
Oh, okay, it, the, but the market, no, I'm just the, the, okay, the, it surprised right. me the market has never appreciated. I think yeah. that the, the, the um, production numbers plays a role there, significant. There's like yeah. 4,000 of those or something. Is, is, is it that much? 5,700. Wow. That's a lot. That I mean, there's 4,000 Ford GTs and that's considered to be a lot. Mm -hmm. you know, there's only 2,900 Lexus IS300 Sport Crosses. <laughs> and the fact that you know that is so why you, you are think about who it, you are. So when you think about it, the IS300 Sport Cross is underrated. Very much. To Jay-Z. I'm going to give you one okay. more on my All list. Right. Yeah. Lamborghini Gallardo. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that Gallardos have never really taken off in price? Right. They're like 90 for an auto still. Yes. Sticks are more, but not much. Definitely. And I'm sitting here, Mercy's, any Mercy is now a big money car. Oh, I know. Like, like the crappiest Mercy is like a 200 car now. Yep, stupid. You yeah. just sold the crappiest Mercy. What did you no, get? No, I didn't sell it. I'm, I'm, I'm still hung on to oh, it, okay. uh, but I'm, I'm debating. But yeah, I had the nicest Gata Gallardo ever. Yeah. yeah. The blue one, I bought it with 3,000 miles, put 3,000 miles on it a year, uh, paid just under 100 for it, and then I sold it for 115. And, How does and this make sense? I thought, oh, when I thought, was this? This was, this was right after I got the Mercy going, so I think it was, it was like a couple, it was a few years ago. It was about yeah. 20, and I thought, I thought, okay, and then of course everything went up in value, and I thought, man, I'm bad I missed the boat in the Gallardos, and I went and looked, and I was like, Oh, the car's only worth like 140. <laughs> yeah. of, of all the Meanwhile, things. Meanwhile, stick 430s are like 250. Right. How does that make any sense? It doesn't. Especially when Mercy's have gone nuts. Mm -hmm. Diablos have gone nuts. Countach have gone nuts. Now, what people are watching are going to say, well, the, the yeah. Gallardo is the entry one. It's not the V12. It's the entry. Okay. It's still a rare, spe I never see yeah. it anymore. It's, it's rare, special, like cool looking. I, I have to also say like over the years, the styling has like come back. Been grown it's, on me. It's, it's like way it's, better than a pretty cool 430. Oh, way, it's way better. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I just don't understand it. R8, R8 V10s don't have a big premium, or, or, or don't have a big right. Yeah, loss lower, compared. Yeah, You'd yeah. think the Gallardo would be way more. It's a Lambo. They're saying they sell for about the same. It makes no sense. You're, that is absolutely a They're, great those one. Those are cool cars. Yeah, mm -hmm. go buy those. Yeah, the Diablo was on my list of overrated. I think. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. Because it's gotten so expensive. Yes, and they it's are the, the, the driving experience isn't as good as a Countach, which is very retro and old. And then, the, of course, the Mercy is, is it still has that experience of being, you know, not a Volkswagen. -y. The uh, Diablo, yeah. though, was the era for a lot of people who have yeah. some money now. And so, a lot of guys like us, I think, they don't want Countaches. Either they're too young and that car didn't mean anything to them, or they know it's difficult to own. And Mercy's just aren't like analog enough. The Diablo, I mean, I would like an SE30. You know what those cost now? A lot. Yeah. So yeah. Was it seven, eight hundred? Or... Yeah. But I, the, I, I feel like a Diablo is harder to own than a Countach. Well, at least that's or that's at circle. least yeah. as difficult. I think yeah. maybe there's a maybe that's one of the secrets about that car. It's not exactly better just because it happens to be a little newer. Yeah. A lot of great cars that we're talking mm -hmm. about here. Yeah. A lot, a lot of what a what an informative and wonderful video, Mr. Hoover. Overrated. Career GT. Insane. You, you, your only arguments were, you, you didn't even discuss the fact that it's a Formula One powertrain. They made the engine for Formula There's One. There's plenty of homologation specials over the Can years. Can you name another car with a Formula One engine in it that drives on the street with a license plate? Uh, LFA? That can't be true. <laughs> the F50 is the only other one. This is, says nothing about motorsports. You made that straight up. I thought it was, okay, never mind. Fine. The F50 is one, but okay, that's a $5 million car. This is only, this is by comparison, an absolute bargain. You know what? I'm gonna put this on my list of underrated cars. Goodbye.